for those kind words. A very good afternoon to all of you. My friends here, Dr. Dhadeh and Dr. Bellad, have told you the efforts put in for resuscitating a newborn. Now, I'll take you a step ahead. When these babies survive, we want them to be normal children. We want an intact survival. And that's the purpose of the study. Brain research to ameliorate impaired neurodevelopment. And we did this with a home-based intervention. We know that we have already heard that it is a leading cause of perinatal mortality. But we also know that babies who survive from birth asphyxia are prone for intellectual disability and they are also prone for neurodevelopmental disorders. There are enough studies to prove this. In fact, 50% of children attending a neurology clinic are due to problems they have faced at birth. What is alarming is birth asphyxia incidence is more in low and middle income countries. This is again well known and that's and this leads to neurological sequelae. So the incidence of birth asphyxia being high, children with neurological sequelae is also more in low and middle income countries. A study has shown that birth asphyxia is estimated to result in loss of 41 million disability adjusted life years. And this is a huge problem. We also know that 200 out, uh, out of the 700 million children under, the year, uh, under less than 5 years of age fail to achieve what is their potential cognitive development. There are many studies in the high income groups, in, in the high income countries, where early developmental intervention in infants has proved to be effective in birth asphyxia. But in children born in low middle income countries with birth asphyxia, there are very few studies to show that early developmental intervention definitely helps in their neurodevelopment. And with this background, the present study was planned. Why is early developmental intervention important for some of us who may not know this is? Brain, though weight-wise it is maximum at birth, or has gained a maximum potential at birth, important synaptic connections are being, uh, uh, are being developed, especially in the first three years of life. But for these synaptic connections between the neurons, it is important that the child or the infant has, faces a lot of experiences, which can be in the form of touch, talking, seeing, all the special senses should be stimulated. And most important is the environment should be a very conducive environment for the neurodevelopment of the child. What is also known is if these experiences are not there, these synaptic connections, which actually grow from millions to trillion in the first three years, get pruned back. And if they get pruned back, the brain may not develop to its potential. So with this background, the main objective of the study was to have a home-based, parent-implemented early intervention and to show its effect on cognitive, social and motor development at three years because that's the most potential age for the brain development. This study was done in the first breath group of infants who were resuscitated with bag and mask ventilation without severe encephalopathy. Children with infants with uh, babies with severe uh, encephalopathy, which was diagnosed on a neurological assessment by the field coordinators at seven days of life using the Ellis method were eliminated if they had severe encephalopathy. Only mild and moderate encephalopathy were included in the study. Three centers were chosen for this study, India, Zambia, and Pakistan. And as I said, these babies came from the first breast clusters. In India, we had eight clusters. And to provide the intervention, we had counselors called, uh, who were mothers living in the clusters, that is in the villages, and who had a minimum of education up to the uh, 10th or the 12th standard 
But most important was they had to be motivated to work in the community. These were the clusters in our uh, site, which were in uh, uh, Belgaum and surrounding Belgaum. This is the study outline. They were mainly grouped into two infants with birth asphyxia and infants without birth asphyxia. They had to be compared. And each group was further divided into the intervention and control. In the intervention group, we use the early developmental intervention along with health and safety counseling. In India, we use the IMC uh, messages. In the control group, they mainly received health and safety counseling, which is a part of the program that is the IMC messages were given to all the uh, children. This is the Indian team. The intervention what we used here was called as Partners for Learning, which mainly assessed the four developmental areas, the cognitive, the social, language, fine motor, gross motor, mainly these skills, 31 skills, and they were split into activities. And how they were split is we used pictorial cards Uh, the counselor used to teach the mother the activity. Every 15 days, an, an activity was taught to the mother. And every 15 days, the counselor visited the mother to teach the activity with the pictorial card. The pictorial card was left with the mother so that the mother would be able to teach the, her baby, her infant, for the next 15 days. Subsequently, when the counselor came after the next 15 days, she would assess whether the baby, uh, whether the infant has learned that activity and only when the uh, infant had learned the activity, she would proceed to the next activity. And this went on for three years. If the activity was not learned by the baby, they would have another two or three settings. With this, they also received this integrated management of childhood illnesses. That's a standard government program uh, where messages are given to the mother about nutrition, health problems and other aspects of child care. This is the picture of the uh, pictorial card and the activity is split into different things, uh, different segments and the mother is thought about this activity after which she teaches the child. It was not only the mother, in fact all the family members if required were, in, were involved in teaching this activity. MC messages were given in the control group and they also visited to keep the control uh, similar to the intervention. They also visited the mother once in 15 days and they spent about one to two hours teaching them about nutrition and other health problems. So as per the standard guidelines, we got the ethical clearance and uh, we had a lot of training on this uh, methodology. First thing was to screen the eligible babies and obtain informed consent because they had to be here for three years. And this was done in 2006. Uh, we had specialists, the pediatric faculty who were blinded for the, whether the babies were from intervention or control to evaluate them with the BSID. And we had the study coordinators and the field supervisors and many practice sessions and also home visits to see that the um, uh, intervention as well as the control messages were implemented. This is a practice session going on in the um, training session. And these are some of the pictures of the village sites where the field supervisors, the country coordinators and everybody else would vi visit the site and see whether the counselors were implementing the activities properly. This is in the control group who received messages about, as I said, nutrition, anthropometry, and other things. So coming to the results, 540 baby uh, infants were screened. Out of them, 102 were not eligible. So we had 438 babies who were eligible, of which 407 consented. <coughs> they were random. Uh, 164 were resuscitated babies, and 243 were non-resuscitated. Each group was randomized into intervention and control. We had very few dropouts, as you can see. The percentage of dropouts was similar in all the groups. 
Of the 164 who were resuscitated, 78 went into the intervention arm and 86 into the control arm. And 74 completed the 36-month evaluation with BSID in the intervention, 80 in the um, uh, control arm. Similarly, you can see here also the numbers are almost comparable. And we use another ages and stages, a questionnaire which assesses the development of the child. Uh, it's a simple questionnaire uh, uh, where the parent's perception of development of the child is assessed and all the areas that is gross motor, fine motors, social, emotional <coughs> um, uh, aspects of and cognitive development of the uh, infants are assessed by this questionnaire. We had translated them into the local language and uh, sorry, we uh, the uh, uh, the pediatrician is to implement this by asking the questions and uh, BSID was assessed at 12 months, 24 months and 36 months uh, by a pediatrician who was blinded to whether they were resuscitated or non-resuscitated. We did an interim analysis at 12 months only in the control arm. We had 86 resuscitated and 115 non-resuscitated, of which 81 had completed and 107 had completed. <coughs> and we can see here, the mental developmental indices of less than 85 are almost equal in the resuscitated and non-resuscitated, both for less than 85 and less than 70 in the resuscitated and non-resuscitated, the control arms. So indicating that even the PDI, that is the psychomotor developmental indices were almost equal in both the resuscitated and non-resuscitated for less than 85 and less than 17. Even the ASQ was almost similar in both the groups for all the domains of development. What did this tell us? that resuscitated, uh, resuscitated babies had an 82% chance of having a normal mental development. 84% of them had a chance of being free of severe disability because only three babies had severe disability. Outcome of resuscitated babies are comparable to those of non-resuscitated babies. So what we had done for the first breath definitely paid us dividends because training birth attendance in neonatal resuscitation and essential newborn care reduces neonatal morbidity also, this told us, at 12 months. Subsequently, the results at 36 months did show some improvement. What was important is the counselors were very motivated, as I said, the adherence to both in the interventional and control group, many a times they used to grumble in the control group. Mothers are telling that we are giving the same messages. But despite which the counselors went in the control group to give the messages. And you can see here that the adherence to the visits was very high. In the intervention group, in the resuscitated and non-resuscitated, parents practiced the activities in almost 62% and 61%. So it's almost equal. MDI at 36 months, there was a slight improvement of about five points in the resuscitated and in the non-resuscitated by about three points, but they were not statistically uh, significant. In the combined group also about five points difference. Uh, MDI less than 85 and less than 70 were almost similar. They were not statistically significant. PDI scores showed again a five point increase in the resuscitated and non-resuscitated a slightly six points and here again five points for the combined. But this was statistically significant by the p-test. PDI scores less than 85 and less than 70 you can see that there was some uh, improvement 8 and 19 and 5 and 10 the numbers but they were not statistically significant, but there was a difference in the psychometer. Overall, the ASQ did not show much difference 
in the resuscitated, non-resuscitated, as well as in the combined groups, as can be seen by this bar diagram also. <coughs> Similarly, for social and emotional development also, there was not much difference as far as the ASQ domains were concerned. We did look at the association of the study sites, the demographics, the socioeconomic data, which can play a role in the development of the child, the birth characteristics and nutritional status. We found no association with these confounding factors. So to conclude, MDI scores were higher for both resuscitated and non-resuscitated children, though small and non-significant. MDI scores were significantly higher in the intervention children when compared to controls in combined group, and this was statistically significant. Psychomotor and cognitive indices were significantly higher in the intervention group in both resuscitated and non-resuscitated children and combined group, and they were statistically significant. Psychomotor and cognitive indices were significantly higher in the intervention group in combined group, and this was highly statistically significant. ASQ and ASQ social and emotional development domains scores did not differ between intervention and control groups for both resuscitated and non-resuscitated. So this could be because of the parents' perception. To summarize, 95% of survivors of mild to moderate birth asphyxia had the potential of having normal neurodevelopment. Early interventional therapy improves neurodevelopmental outcome, especially the psychomotor, that is cognitive uh, development in birth asphyxiated babies. Home-based interventional therapy implemented through parents is feasible and acceptable in rural communities. This study definitely showed us that, and right now we have no program by the government in place for this. Our limitations were severe encephalopathy diagnosed at one week were excluded from the study. We had only three infants. Evaluation results were available only of up to 36 months of age. And we know that many of the subtle neurodevelopmental um, disorders like learning disabilities, etc., can be diagnosed even up to 18 years of life. So uh, we need a longer follow-up. And we also need larger studies and longer follow-up up to school age uh, to study these neurodevelopmental indications. When compared to the high-income groups, the parent trainee intervention there is much more intense. We may need, it was only 60% here, we may need more motivated parents to see that this intervention would be more beneficial to the uh, children. That's the last slide, I think. 